Hi everybody, it's Brittany with Hitch to Hitch. I'm here to talk to you today about homeschooling or road schooling as we like to call it. So this is our third year on the road homeschooling. We have previously covered pre-K four, kindergarten, sixth grade and seventh grade. So this year we're focusing on eighth grade and first grade. So in this video, what we're gonna do is talk about how I go about planning the homeschooling year and then showing you which curriculums I've chosen. So for my planning process, I have like a five-step system, I guess, makes it easy. Step number one, I go to my handy-dandy notebook. So this is just a three-subject notebook. My first two subjects I have for researching campgrounds and places we wanna go and keeping track of that kind of stuff. And my last subject is for school. And what I do is, is throughout the year, you know how you're on all these Facebook pages for homeschooling and road schooling, and people talk about curriculums all year long. Sometimes things pop up that's interesting. So I jot down my notes in my notebook of things to look at when it comes time to plan in the next year. So step number one is reflecting. I reflect on the curriculums for last year, what worked and what didn't, which ones will keep, and then I'm going to reflect on my notes. What curriculums looked interesting? What should we um, look, look into in terms of planning? So that's step one. Step number two is research. And I research two different things. The first thing that I'm gonna research is like my topics. What topics need to be covered? I know there's no need to be covered necessarily everywhere, depending on your state requirements, but I like to have a general foundation in terms of making sure that no gaps are made because we skipped over like a huge subject that we definitely need to cover. So I like to have a general idea of what topics should be covered in what grade just to ensure that um, we don't leave these big gaps. And then the second thing that I research in step number two is the curriculums, the curriculums that I wrote down in my notebook, and the ones that we need to choose for these topics that I've selected. Okay, step number three is then making decisions, which is probably the hardest step of all because there are so many choices out there. Making that decision and committing to something is really hard. So it takes me a couple months, which is why I start in like March or April before the year is already over. I start having all of these notes and then when it's summertime in June, I know like I'm supposed to relax. I'll take like a week or two off. I still start thinking about what I'm gonna choose because it takes me a long time to make a decision. Okay, so it's decision time. I decide on which curriculums to buy. And then if there are subjects that I don't wanna buy a curriculum for because I feel comfortable creating it myself or pulling like little bits of resources from here or there instead of buying a set curriculum, those are the decisions that I need to make. Step number four is then to create the courses that I'm going to create myself. Uh, I start with making a syllabus. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what that looks like for us. So two courses for Barrett, who will be the eighth grader that I am kind of creating myself. One is an elective, it's going to be a cooking class. So I'm just breaking it up into units. We're gonna do this for two nine weeks. And so I just write the unit name, write what topic, and I know what is gonna be in here, but you could also keep little notes or have a de more detailed syllabus. But I'm just jotting down what we're gonna do that week for that topic. Another one that I'm not necessarily creating myself, but I'm also not buying a set curriculum is his social studies. So we have the Young People's Guide to American History or U.S. History by Howard Zinn. And we have the Everything You Need to Ace American History book. So those are two of my resources that I'm going to use. I'm also going to be using Crash Course on Netflix, America the Story of Us on Netflix, or Crash Course on YouTube, America the Story of Us on Netflix. I'll... I'll create activities and tests to go along with it. So I'm pulling a bunch of resources for social studies. So I am creating units. And so with those units, I have guiding questions, the chapters he needs to read, the videos he needs to watch, the activities he needs to do, and then he'll have like a quiz at the end of that unit. 
So that is how I create my own courses. Some I really do create, like the electives for cooking class, and some I am creating the framework using resources pulled from everywhere. Okay, and the final step, step five, is I create a um, nine weeks planning guide. This is something that I did as a teacher. I taught for many years, so it's kind of just instilled in me and I'm not going to get away from it because I am very organized and I like to be organized. So I will give you a little glimpse of what our nine weeks guide looks like. I will tell you that normally they are a lot more detailed than this, but since Barrett is going into eighth grade, we are putting a little bit more of that work on him this year to start learning some responsibility and independence. So I'm giving him kind of a general guideline and he's got to map it out and make sure he finishes and we're going to start the process anyway so that when he gets to the high school years he's he's got it. But All right, so here's just a quick glimpse of the first nine weeks. I have his subjects mapped out, math, his ELA, his writing, his grammar, which is part of ELA science, social studies, elective, and language. So the ones with the stars, he has a more detailed look at the units to know what he needs to do for each unit. For the other ones, it lists out the lessons that he needs to complete. So like I showed you before, for the social studies, the units are mapped out with the resources and things that he needs to do. So that is a look at uh, his eighth grade syllabus. So that's a general overview of how I go about planning. Now this does not include things like library books, field trips while we're on the road, and things like that. Obviously we'll be on the road and doing a lot of field trips to historical places and museums and stuff. This is just our book work that he will need to complete. And that is just Barrett, the eighth grader. I have not done Corbin's yet, but it will look very similar, except it'll be a lot less because I have his curriculums and basically the only thing I'll be adding in is like some grammar and some journaling, but I usually don't need to have a syllabus for Corbin because I buy his curriculums and they're pretty mapped out so that I really only need to do this for Barrett. So that's a look at how I go about planning. Next, we're going to go with what curriculums we chose for this year. We're going to start looking at the 8th grade curriculum that we have, and we'll go a little bit more in depth to it. But here is math, writing, ELA, social studies, and um, I guess an extra, I guess it kind of goes with writing, ELA, and we're going to talk about the ones that are not here. All right, so we're going to start off with talking about those core subjects first, starting with math. <clears throat> We're continuing with Saxon math. So sixth grade, we tried Singapore dimensions. Seventh grade, we did Saxon 8-7. And so for eighth grade, we went ahead and went with the algebra one half. Most people skip this if they did Saxon 8-7 because they say it's very similar. They're both pre-algebra courses. Barrett went ahead and did the placement test. He was right on the border. He missed a few that it could really could have gone either way but my philosophy in choosing this one was that I'd rather him be really really strong here before moving on to because I know once you get to those high school courses you've got to have that good foundation so I'd rather him be a little bit bored this year with redoing the same things over and over and having a really strong foundation than really struggling and the struggling just keep getting worse and worse as you go to those more difficult concepts. So I got the homeschooling packet, which is a textbook. So this one definitely looks different than the Saxon 8-7. It does not have the mental math. It doesn't have the sprints, not the sprints. I call them sprints. Um, fact practice. And it's like really small print. But the lessons are the same where you teach, it has example solutions, and then basically the problem set after. So it came with the hardcover textbook. I've got the, this homeschool packet is the answers to the test and the answers to the problem sets in here. And then it's got the test forms booklet. Okay, so that is 
math. Moving on to ELA. For ELA, I have it broken down into a couple of things. Reading, we do novel studies. So in the description, I will put the novels that I have planned out. I do 50% of his novels are linked to his social studies at the time. So he's getting some historical fiction and nonfiction there. And the other 50% are different genres and classics and things that I feel like he should be exposed to. Barrett reads a ton. So all the other genres that he wants to read, he does on his own. So I do about three to four novel studies in a nine weeks usually about three. I think I have three in a nine weeks, unless they are big novels that we're going to do a lot with. Um, continuing with ELA for grammar, we have this book. It's from last year. It was Daily Grams. It still says grade seven. We didn't finish it because we went, I don't know, maybe about 40 days into it and well, more than that, about 70 days into it. And I realized that we needed to put a stop and go back and really review and review and review the grammar, make sure that he understood the concepts behind it, because this is not actual teaching. This is just practicing and reviewing. Every day you work on things like capitalization, punctuation, fixing sentences, and he wasn't doing too well on his own. So I went back and retaught all of these concepts last year. So we're going to finish it up and hopefully he's retained most of the, most of those lessons. We are doing word roots. This is from critical thinking company. It is level three. I just looked at the, we've never done one before, so we haven't done level one or level two. I looked at the table of contents and this one seemed like it was a good spot for him to start because level one and two, I think he knew a lot of them having done Greek and Latin roots in prior years. So this one is going to take us two years to complete the way I kind of have it mapped out where he doesn't do it every single day, every single week. We're going to spread it out to where it's about half, half the year because it is for grade seven through 12. So we're going to do two years to complete this. I add in the fallacy detective. So this seems to be a, a two part thing. Fallacy detective is the first book and thinking toolbox is the second one that we'll do next year. And this one, it's mapped out about once a week for the, for the school year and how it finished. So it's 38 lessons where they're learning deductive reasoning and logical thinking, which is a great resource for writing and just critical thinking in general. And then for writing, last year we started medieval history writing from IEW because he was doing medieval history last year we are skipping ahead this year in social studies to u.s history because we're doing the east coast and we're going to all those places so i was like let's put a halt to medieval go over to u.s history so it's relevant and we'll get back to you know renaissance time period and things like that later on so we made it about three-fourths of the way through this one so what we're going to do is the first nine weeks we're going to spend finishing this up because it's not going to take a whole year and for the last three nine weeks i got this one evan moore six trait writing or if you know it as six plus one writing traits is how i taught it this looked like a it is for grade eight it looked like a great resource just to, again to make sure you have that foundation i think that's the theme of of this year being the last year before high school i want him to have that solid foundation everywhere as much as he can math very much his writing very much that vocabulary those thinking skills grammar everything have a good foundation so it breaks it down into the writing traits of ideas and organization and it takes a couple weeks to go through all of them and practice how to organize your writing how to have your good ideas set how to use the right word choice it just seems like a really good resource to, to have that foundation. Okay, I think that is everything for ELA. We did reading, writing, grammar, vocab. Yeah. Okay, moving on to social studies. So earlier in the video, I sh showed you how I'm making my own units using all these different resources. 
So here is the Howard Zinn, A Young People's History of the United States. I am currently reading the People's History from Howard Zinn while he's reading the Young People's History. And Everything You Need to Ace American History, the Big Fat Notebook. Love this one. So cool. And I love the little quizzes in it. So these are two of the resources for social studies, as well as pulling in those videos and those activities that I showed you earlier. Okay, the other core subject is science. Science is another one that I am kind of pulling resources to create for myself. For it being eighth grade, what we decided to do is to do kind of a collaboration of different topics that he was interested in doing because it might be his last chance. You know, once you get to high school, it's the biology, biology, chemistry, physics, kind of those set courses that you have to do. So I wanted to spend this year filling in little gaps and picking things that interest him. So the topics that we decided on are, um, no oh shoot, zoology is the first one. The second one is genetics. I picked that one because that's a gap we have not filled yet. And then based on genetics, he picked forensic science. So for zoology, I found a, might be like an 18 week course on OutSchool that he is gonna do. It meets once a week on Tuesdays. We read the description together. He thought it sounded great. It's in his age range. It wasn't a terrible price and it'll take him several weeks to complete it. And it is a flex class, which is also great for our internet being on the road. It'll already be up there and he can do it, you know, as he wants to. So we're doing zoology on OutSchool. Genetics, I am going to be going with a, a unit study from Move, Moving Beyond the Page. I haven't ordered that yet because we'll be doing that after Christmas. So I'll be doing a unit study from there to try it out for the first time. And then forensic science, again, I haven't done that. That'll be the last thing. I was told by someone that there is a book that you can get off of Amazon. It was like blood, bones, and something like that. That was a really great resource. And we might do another out school for there. But I haven't gotten that far into planning. I'm worried about the first half of the year first. So that's for science. Now, being in eighth grade, we are going to add some electives and a language. We are going to try this year, because we haven't done it before, Babbel. Um, we tried Duolingo. It wasn't my favorite, the way it's organized. So we're going to try Babbel this year to get, again, foundation, the theme of the year, so that for high school we can do a more in-depth and may, maybe have a, like a teacher online or things like that and spend the money by having a good science thing going on there. We're just going to get the foundation from Babbel this year and electives he chose three electives the first one was the cooking like i said earlier we're going to do that for two nine weeks then i want to find a model un on out school because it seems really interesting and he chose debate he did a debate last year on out school really really enjoyed that so he wants to do that again so out school has been a great resource for us for filling in the extra stuff that he wants to do and let me check my handy notebook. I believe we've covered, yeah, that's everything for eighth grade. So we'll take a look at first grade in just a minute. All right, so now we're gonna switch over to talking about Corbin. He is going to be starting first grade this year. So I'm gonna show you the curriculums that we've chosen and talk about why we chose them. All right, starting off with his reading, we are switching on over to All About Reading. And the only reason for this is that last year we did Logic of English and the Logic of English A only lasted half the year. It was getting quite expensive for me to go ahead and do B and things like that. And someone I knew had the All About Reading and offered it to me. So that made it easier <laughs> um, to go ahead and use a curriculum that somebody else had already had. Um, so we're switching over to All About Reading. And so to pair with the all About Reading, I also went ahead and purchased the All About Spelling. I did level one to match the level one All About Reading. And so I got the student packet here with the cards and everything and the teacher's manual.
also with his ELA, I got the Handwriting Without Tears, my printing book. I just got this one book as opposed to all the other components um, because the journal, we already have a journal and do that. And the other writing seemed a little advanced with like writing stories and things like that because we'll do that in the journals anyway after we read stories and things like that. So the, my printing book is really just for him to work on handwriting in print. We started the LOE handwriting in cursive last year and he's got that pretty down pat so I want to switch over and do a little bit of print and we can finish up some cursive later on um, as he gets older. Okay and then for math we are sticking with right start math. I love it and I also feel like since we started last year and bought the whole manipulatives kit and, and spent a good bit of money on it. I did organize it into this. Um, and I really, really enjoyed. I love the foundation that it creates. I went ahead and got B. So it comes with the, the lesson book, the worksheets, and the appendix. That's your, your cards and the cardstock papers and things like that. That's a little look at Bright Start B. And finally, something new to us is a science unit from The Good and the Beautiful. So this is our first one that we're doing using this curriculum. I'm pretty excited about it. I purchased the <coughs> print copy. We just got it in the mail today. I actually was outside hole punching it and getting it into the binder. It is 14 lessons. It's all about arthropods. It's the one I did let Corbin choose, and that's the one that he chose. And what I like about it is it could also have extensions for grades 7 through 8 on weeks when Barrett doesn't have something else for science. He can kind of fill into those lessons. But he picked bugs, so bugs it is. Yeah. We'll see how long this lasts. If this lasts, you know, one nine weeks, we'll get another one. Two nine weeks, we can get another one. We can um, yeah. fill in fill in with other things as well and then for social studies so for social studies that's things that we fill in through our traveling so we are road schooling and we're on the road social studies and science comes in when we do our junior ranger programs and we're going to historical sites and things like that we learn about it through books from the library so it's not a curriculum that I'm buying yet not in first grade so just for first grade, we're doing the all about reading, all about spelling, handwriting without tears, right start math level B, and a unit from the good and the beautiful, a science unit that we're excited about. So that is a look at our homeschool curriculum for this year. We're actually starting next week. I'm pretty excited to see the new curriculums that we've chosen and see how well they work for us. And, um, yeah, if you have any questions or, or comments, uh, put them in the, the comments below. We'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Or go ahead and comment what is the curriculum that you are trying this year that you are the most excited about and looking forward to. So good luck with your school years this year. Hope everyone has a great year. So I didn't really know about bugs that much. So I kind of, you know, want to know about a few bugs. Like, there's tarantulas, butterflies, ants. We get to build an ant farm that's really excited. All right. Subscribe to follow our journey. Get to the subscribe button. <laughs> I don't know what it's called.